hard stopper. Oh, without a doubt. Uh, as we took a look at this, West Must Kingdom is without a doubt the biggest team we faced all year with their uh, front court at six foot five eleven and five ten. We knew that we couldn't get into a half court game with them, and that was obvious when they came out in the third quarter and they went to uh, uh, number 42 by the name of uh, Trout, and she is just an exceptional player. We worked uh, the last three days on uh, really trying to front her, side front, double down on it, and uh, when they got her the ball, she was very, very difficult to uh, control, to be honest with you. What we were able to do early in, uh, in the game, in the first quarter, was apply the pressure the way that we have been fortunate to do all year long. Being able to do that, uh, and I was talking to their coach after the game, uh, he said the times that they have lost is when people got up and really played hard-nosed defense, diving on the floor after the ball. Uh, even though they were so much bigger, we still worked very, very hard on the boards, putting a body on people, and then struggled through an offensive night like we did. Yeah, what we saw from up here was yeah, you had a difficult time putting anything down, especially oh, inside. Down. But rebounding, even though West Must Kingdom was doing a great job second half rebounding, they were getting punished inside. Uh, just, just a great effort by the girls. One of the things we ever noticed in the third quarter when they made their one is that your deep team plays a lot of team defense. They get a lot of people to the ball where the ball is at. Right. A couple of times it worked against the inside of the baseline. They'd take the ball down low on the baseline, about eight feet out, sucks the defense out, and it was leaving the big girl. Uh, Polly Pollock open underneath white from inside a couple of times. Yeah, that's the thing that we, and we, we work on it in practice and we watch uh, very carefully. If we get two girls stopping or trapping on that end line and then getting the rotation over to the block area to cover, we're fine. We get three girls down in there. It's having a, the girl, especially anybody tall, is going to find that open person on the block. And it did hurt us. Middle of the third quarter when they were making their run on you. And you called a timeout, took the girls to the side, what are you talking about? I just wanted them to settle down. The thing that we weren't doing, and it was not the girls' fault, it was mine. I was running an offense. Uh, they really mixed their defense up very well. When we, What I ended up doing, we pulled the ball out and took a look at just exactly what their defense was. They had gone from man into zone. What we were trying to attack, uh, basically, somewhat like a matchup zone with a little bit of motion offense. When we pulled it out, set it, I took the time out, drew out the, uh, we have really four different sets that we run against it. I picked one that uh, would allow us to get a lot of motion against it. Then we were able to spread it out, we found the seams, and then it were able to penetrate. And uh, again, the ball still didn't fall the way we wanted it to, but we were enough to get that little bit of a lead. And I, we, I told the girls right at the beginning in the locker room before we came out, I said, anticipate a game clear down through the end of the third quarter, into the fourth, we might be down six or eight points, they might be, but continue with the press. Don't ever give it up on it. Everybody must talk, they must help. And uh, we were fortunate. They worked as hard as I've ever seen them work against any team. We were able to get some key turnovers, and then late in that fourth quarter, they sat back in the zone. We pulled the ball out, just trying to set the offense, and took a look at the clock and decided, hey, we're ahead. Let's just make it come out foul. We were up by a bucket or so, 2.15 or so left in the ball game. We brought it down and it ran somewhere around a minute 15 off the clock. Right. Came away with two points. Yeah. The great jump shot. I think it was the biggest jump shot. Yeah, and that's, you know, for Jennifer, his pro is just like any of these girls that have come off the bench, uh, Jennifer Fickett's his game has, has just stepped up another level. Jennifer Miller is now healthy again. Her game has stepped up another level. At Jody Buzzard, Melissa Lynn came off the bench, which in the past here a few games she hasn't been playing a whole lot, but she's improving. She came in and gave us some quality minutes tonight. Uh, uh, you know, when, when you praise the team, you, you take a look at the bench of some of the girls that didn't get in there, all their supporting, screaming, hollering, makes the game fun. There's your confidence knowing you can go to the bench when you have to. Oh, you have to. Yeah, I've always believed, I've, I've always wanted a, a, a team that I'm probably right now about eight to 9D that we will go to. Uh, and if I can ever get to the 10th person, then uh, we're, we're going to really be a force at that point. So you can write back down here Wednesday night. Wednesday night. So you got an off night back here Wednesday night and we'll travel night for you. Yeah, against Indian Valley, which uh, is a very well coached team. Uh, they do a lot of the same thing we do. The thing we saw about Indian Valley is uh, they made a good run 
or they, they almost gave up a lead, but they held on, they stymied a good run against them late in the ballgame. And we also saw Fort Fry, who lost tonight's game, make a nice run against the Union down at River down there. So they were in it all the way, much like Hughes. They had to fight off a, a, a tough run down the stretch, but they on for the win. They looked like a very physical team. Too. Yeah, they did. Uh, practically, in watching Indian Valley, this is the second time we've watched them. Uh, they're almost like a new image. So, and then the thing of it is, right now, probably both teams are about equal in size. You don't have those, what, three large, tall girls on the inside that are good basketball players. They're just not tall. Uh, Muskingum has, you know, they, they square to the basket, they can put the ball in the hoop. They gave us some very good man-to-man -man defense, which I was hoping they would play us, man. And they, they gave us a lot of problems. I thought they got exceptionally played, especially in the first half for McLaughlin, the 22. Yeah, I didn't, I down. really felt as I took a look at their starting five, we knew that we had to attack the girls. I really didn't give this girl as much credit. Uh, I learned a lot tonight uh, in, in respect to her basketball ability. Outstanding job. Another thing we noticed was, despite the very aggressive de defense that the Tigers always play, you really didn't get into foul trouble tonight. Well, uh, probably no more than three. I don't think anybody picked up their fourth foul. Uh, in those key situations, people came off the bench to rest the girls that picked up two and picked up three. Then taking a look at the clock and getting them back into the game, just telling them, uh, forget about how many fouls you have. Get in and play as hard as you can. If you foul somebody, hey, you just do it. Don't worry about it. Okay, so you come back against Indian Valley, a team you say that nourish yourself. How do you prepare for a team like that? Uh, probably the same way we prepared for this team here. Again, up with the press. Uh, again, preparing possibly for a box in one, triangle in one, uh, against the zone. Just a little bit of everything. Coach, you pressed almost the entire ball game. It looked like the kids in pretty good shape. They have to be wise because they didn't look like they were sucking air or having no. trouble getting them down before no. the end of the ball game. Uh, we made that clear to them at the beginning. In fact, last year we made it clear. If you're going to play, you got to play end line to end line. We don't have those big girls right now on the inside. Melissa Lynn is slowly coming around. But right now, uh, you know, our tall girls five foot eight. So if you're going to have a team like that, you've got to go end line to end line. And uh, if you get tired, let me know. Somebody else is sitting there that's going to get in there and you do the same type of job. A lot of kids on the bench just waiting to get in that ball. Oh, they can't wait to get in. It. You know, and uh, I know some of them had uh, their eyes that were sitting there that were waiting to get in, looked like 50 cent pieces, but when they got in there, it didn't take them very long to say, hey, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to get the job done and went out and just played their hearts out. Played Coach, hearts congratulations. Out. Just an excellent job. Again, I want to thank the radio station and all the support that we've received from not only from Wellsville, from East Liverpool, from Beaver Local. Uh, we had an OVAC meeting yesterday in the entire River Valley. Uh, you know, gave us uh, the best of luck. And I think I'm that's, really proud of it. That's one thing that we found, whether it be football or basketball, when it comes to tournament time, everybody's kind of regionalized. Right. They pull for whoever's in the tournament. Right. Makes no difference who it is. And, uh, you know, we, we knew what we were coming up against. Uh, and so a lot of the coaches said, well, if your press works, you're going to do pretty good. If not, then you're in trouble. And fortunately for tonight, the, the press just worked enough so that we could get that little bit of a lead and uh, hang on and come away with a big victory. Once again, thanks a lot. It was a great win. Okay, thank you very much for being here. That's going to do it.